I think we can all admit that Raiders of the Lost Ark, released in 1981, changed the game for the action and adventure genre of Hollywood filmmaking, so much so that it has even started its own subgenre as the quote, swashbuckling adventure slash treasure hunting action for films. In the decades that followed, besides the film's own sequels, many action-adventure films tried to replicate what Lucas and Spielberg pulled off in 1981. Some notable films here are The Mask of Zorro, released in 1998, and The Mummy, released in 1999, but I believe the film that not only captured the same magic of Raiders, but also pulled from its imitators, is none other than one of Disney's best films of all time, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Now, I wasn't around for this, but I don't think anyone thought that Disney turning one of their theme park rides into a feature film would be as successful as it turned out to be. I'm here today to talk about just a handful of the elements that not only made Curse of the Black Pearl great, but how it almost became the best of its action subgenre. There are a few things that I believe are quintessential for a film to get all the points in this category. An interesting focal character, who may or may not be the main protagonist. An entertaining villain, who is almost exactly like the protagonist or focal character. A familiar context for its setting, and a tangible stake, the treasure or object that the film centers around. Just how Raiders give its franchise its star with Indiana Jones, Pirates of the Caribbean gave its audience an entertaining and complicated focal character in Johnny Depp's Captain Jack Sparrow. This character throughout the film is neither the protagonist nor the antagonist, but is in the middle and is trying to find out what he really wants to accomplish. In this way, he brings everything else to life. The antagonist, Captain Hector Barbosa, is almost exactly like Jack Sparrow. They are both pirates. The difference is that Barbosa is just a little more sinister and is willing to do much darker things than Jack to get what he wants, making him the film's villain. A main part of the Barbosa character as well is that he is a mutineer, and this is emphasized by the event being repeated by different characters several times throughout the movie. Just one other thing to set him apart from Jack Sparrow. The setting of the Curse of the Black Pearl, though not quite as familiar as the pre-World War II world of Raiders of the Lost Ark, is the almost mid-18th century Caribbean Sea. This is a world where the British Empire controls the seas, and the pirates are but relics on the run. The factions at play are chiefly the British of Port Royal, personified by James Norrington, trying to maintain law and order, and the other factions are the different groups of pirates. This includes the Cursed Black Pearl crew and Captain Jack. The treasure is the cursed gold of Hernando Cortez, and the whole plot of the film is the Black Pearl trying to free themselves from their curse via the gold. This is where the film goes into the dark and supernatural side of things with the curse of making the pirates into immortal living skeletons, which makes for some very clever action sequences. The curse also relates to all the other characters, especially the main protagonists, Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan, to bring all the characters to where they are by the film's third act. With those third act action set pieces, and really the way the movie is structured, we get a film that appropriately feels like an entertaining and fun ride that was still directed, written, and made very well. Though it may not top Raiders of the Lost Ark, Disney's first Pirates of the Caribbean film still perfected the action subgenre in its own way. Hello everyone, I hope you enjoyed that video essay, and you can show it by leaving a like on this video, commenting down below, and subscribing to this channel for more content about movies. That's all for now, and I'll see you all in the next video.